I'm thankful for all of you that came today, even though it, you know things are a lot of people are not coming out to church as they should anymore because you know it's not on Zoom anymore. You have to, it requires effort now. <laughs> you have to get dressed and come out. To put in the work, yes. Yeah, you have to put in the work. But for those that are here, Amen. oh, El Shaddai just Amen. shook my soul. Amen. And he wants you to know that he have a blessing for you. Hallelujah. Mm. He's going to break down some walls for you, he said. Whoa, this is incoming stuff. He's going to break down some walls, hallelujah, that the enemy had put in place for you not to advance anymore. God, hallelujah, of Israel. Oh, shalom. Hallelujah, Lord God. He said he's going to break down those walls. Hallelujah. In the name of Amen. Jesus, whatsoever obstacle that you face today, God wants you to know that he is coming. He is going to break them down. He is going to do this for his name's sake because you have put your faith in him. Because you have put your all, all, all your faith in him. Because you have told people, I'm waiting on the Lord. People have looked at you like you're crazy. Like, oh, what is going on here? They're looking at you like you're mad. But God wants you to know that he is on his way. Amen. If he has not already done it for Amen. you, he is a just God. He is an on-time God. Hallelujah. Meaning that his timing is perfect. Meaning that he might not come at the hour that you're looking at. Because he says that time is different with him. Hallelujah. He said he's Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. So time is very, very different for him. A thousand days is like a day for the Lord. Yes. So he says that though you put your trust in him, he said you have a special blessing on his way. Hallelujah. Oh wow. He said the fact that you support this ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He's writing it down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. That you support in this ministry. Oh, thank you, Lord, by supporting his servants. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Wow. What a wonderful God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, Lord.
is mighty indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. And I know he's going to deliver us from every situation that come against us, from every obstacle. He's going to give us power to Amen. move those mountains. Amen. Hallelujah. So though I wait, and though I look crazy waiting, I know the Lord that I serve, and I know that he is coming to rescue me. In the name of Jesus. So I will wait for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You never fail me yet. My Jesus never, never fail me yet. Hallelujah. Today God wants you to know that he's concerned about us looking back. It's called Don't Look Back, the sermon today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Don't look back. Don't Praise look. God. Praise God. What a word. What a word. Thank you, Lord. After God has done that new thing that he said he was going to do for us, he said he's going to do a new thing in Isaiah 43, 18. He said he's going to do a new thing. He says in Isaiah 43, verse 18, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. Hallelujah. Then God said, Yet you have not called upon me. You have not wearied yourself for me, O Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offering, but yet you're asking me to do all these things for you. You have not honored me with your sacrifices, your tithes, but you have burdened me with all your sin, all your offenses. But I am God. I am he who blots out your transgressions. Hallelujah. Amen. For my own sake. Yes. And I remember your sins no more. This is to say, what he's saying is that the things that happened that went down in the past, you know, maybe 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, 10. However length of time has happened, and still we keep revisiting it because the enemy just throwing it all the time. Sometimes in your sleep, the enemy comes back with a memory from 20 years ago, a memory from even one year ago, shoot, a memory from something that happened a month ago where you made a mistake. We are human beings, and so we will make mistakes. That is, that is something that's gonna happen. We are going to make mistakes. We cannot keep on remembering these mistakes and reliving them over and over. God is saying to us today, he says it very, very clear, do not remember those former things. Don't do it. Instead, he says, behold, I'm going to do something new. Now, if you keep on thinking about the thing that happened, the mistake that you made, as long as you keep on thinking about it, my friend, it's very difficult to get that new thing. Because the mistake puts you in a state of mind that causes you to feel sad, to feel wearied, you're not going to be rejoicing over your mistakes. No, we don't rejoice over our mistakes. Instead, we, we will rejoice over things that make us happy. So this is why God is saying to stop thinking about those former things already. Like, please, just, keep, just stop it. It's really bothering him that you keep on, that we keep on going back down those years. It bothers him. Because he wants to create this new reality. But while our mind is wrapped up in the old reality, it's very, very hard to pull your mind out of it. So there are some tricks that you can use. So one of the tricks that I've used is I started now to... I started to, um, as soon as I start going down... The, the lane of the mistakes. You know, once I hit that lane right there, 
Oh, 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 I'm not going there. You turn back. You see, it's a physical, it's a spiritual place. It's a dry place too. It's a dark place as well. It's not just a, you know, when you go down that, that dark lane, misery lane it's called. Yeah. When you step on the threshold, you have to turn back now. And you know what? I tried it and it actually worked. I didn't think I could command my mind not to go down misery lane. I didn't know that. I thought I had to lay there and just go through the mistakes. Oh, I should have done this better. Oh, I should have done that. Oh, if only I had. Oh, if only I hadn't, rather. You can actually program your mind not. Yes, you have to pivot. Right at the threshold of misery lane. As soon as you see, uh oh, you see the sign? Misery lane. What do we do when we see a roadblock? Roadblock. Can't go. What do we do? Stop. We stop. Stop it already. And we turn around because you can't go that way. It's blocked off. It's possibly a turn around. Yeah. So you have to stop physically in the physical realm yes. and find another way to go. Amen. So when you embark and you say, oh, that's misery lane. We don't want any part of Misery Lane anymore. No we can't afford to go down there anymore. Because while we go down there, we are robbing ourselves of going down Victory Lane. Yeah. Why go down Misery Lane yeah. when you can go down Victory Lane? Blessings in with Blessings. Yeah. There's a parade. <laughs> There's a parade. You know, people are dancing and stuff. Victory Lane, you're one of the dancers. You, you got a little bop. You know, you got a rhythm, a beat, and you go to Victory Lane, yes. feeling good. Yes. Today, we are in Victory Lane. Right. Last night, where were we? Victory you, Lane. Victory Lane? Yes. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Roadblock. <laughs> See that? So now, tonight, when, <laughs> yes. So I tried it last night, and as soon as I said, oh, oh, that looks like Misery Lane. Because I had just, you know, some. This week, is, it's, it's been trying, but good stuff happened yesterday. You know, a lot, a lot of good stuff. We have a lot, of, we, unfortunately, we have a, uh, quite a few roadblocks. Unfortunately, it's just, I don't know, it comes with the ministry, I don't know. But it also comes with all the blessings that God has in store for us. Because the year 2022, we already know what's going to happen. It's going to be a year of explosion, a tsunami of blessings is on its way and I already hear the tumbling, the rumbling. I hear that rumbling. I hear it. And the enemy is keep trying to just just throw me off my feet all the time. But I'm not gonna complain because I know some pastors who the enemy throw them off their feet to the point where there's so many deaths in their family they can scarcely recover. I know some pastors now that have made it well in the world, you know, and in society, but the things that they have to go through right now, children, their children dying, you know, no parent should have to go through that. That is an actual thing that's happening right now in a lot of families. The enemy, the, the, the master of death, the, he is reaping a lot of souls right now. So a lot of people are actually dealing with death, death, grieving. and grieving. Pain. They can't, you can scarce recover. I know some pastors who are dealing with that. I know a male pastor, very, very, very well known. He lost his son, and now this year he lost his other son. Wow. And his wife has um, a terrible disease, wow. and she can scarcely walk. She cannot come to church. So when I stop to think about all of these tra tragedies that are going on with my co-workers, I would call them, workers in the field, and then I say, Lord, you didn't really give me so much pain to deal with. So I can deal with the little, just the little pain that you give me. I can deal with it because it has not involved a loss of life. I know another pastor, what she's going through, she's all alone. And what she's going through, her sister died in, in 2021. 
and then another sister died and now she is all alone. There's no husband to comfort her and she has to go on. She has a church to represent. Okay? And I know that she's been there for a long, long time. And yet there's there's very, very few people in her congregation. So think about, you know, many, many years, you know, 20 years. If you have 20 years in ministry and you don't have much people to, to come and hear the word, pastors get depressed. Pastors, a lot of pastors, there's a, a, they commit suicide. They turn from righteousness because they don't see, they can't wait anymore for the salvation of the Lord. And so they turn, they face from the Lord, and they go their own way. A lot of pastors just give up. Right at this time in 2021, so many churches have closed. Period. They cannot go on. They just can't. Their heart is too broken to put back together again, to stand up Amen. and to declare that he is God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm thankful, O oh Lord God for the little tribulations that strengthen me, hallelujah, in this field, hallelujah, in the ministry. Thank you, Lord God. It's okay because they strengthen me, hallelujah. But so much is coming, so, so much is coming, and it, when it hits, it's not just going to hit me, it's going to ricochet on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're going to feel the rumbling, the rumblings, of, I already hear them, I already see them. God has promised, hallelujah, that this is going to be a year of uncommon favor, hallelujah. And I have seen uncommon favor before. I am not new to uncommon favor. I have seen the glory of the Lord before in the land of the living. And hallelujah, I'm not an older person where I can say, well, I've been waiting 40 years. I have seen the glory of the Lord in short, short time. And it has encouraged me as it will encourage you. No matter how old you are, you're going to see the glory of the Lord in this time that you live in. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You too going to see God do uncommon things. Hallelujah. The same kind of things and even greater things that he has done for me. He's going to do for you too. Hallelujah. You're going to see, you just watch and wait and be of good courage. Strengthen up your heart. Be of good courage. Come on. Stand firm. Don't stand firm. Don't go down that misery lane. Stay away from misery lane. You see, your parents, when well, they used to tell you, oh, don't go over there by that street because there's been known to happen bad things on that street. Don't pass there, right? My parents told me that. So I'm here to tell you, misery lane, don't go back. God wants you to know he's doing a new thing. And if you keep on visiting misery lane, it's going to take longer. Because your mind is wrapped up in misery lane. In all the problems that you are going through. Amen? Amen. Amen. He said, I will even make a road in the wilderness for you and rivers in a desert. Really? You're going to be going through a dry time and there's going to be a river all of a sudden. You, Amen. just for you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. This is what God says. I am the Lord who formed you in the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. I am the, I am the Lord who foils the signs of false prophets and makes fools of the people who practice witchcraft and sorcery and that they can make things happen for you if you pay that and if you bring this and bring that. He said he makes fools of these people. He says he overthrows the learning of the wise and turns it into nonsense. He could do hmm. that too. He carries out the words. What? God says he is the one that carries out the words of his servant. Did you guys get that? God carries out the words 
of the servants and fulfills the predictions of his messengers. Hey! Hey! Anybody here identify as a servant? Yeah. Hallelujah! Amen. <laughs> because God is looking to carry out the words of his servants. And to make your predictions, your prophecy, whatever you predict, he is going to make it come to life. That's what he does. He gives us, he gives us the anointing, right? And then he says that he, he's going to come and he's going to carry out all, of the, all these things that I'm declaring to be true. God backs this. He's backing my words. I'm not speaking emptily. He's backing these predictions. So, that's why it takes a lot of holy boldness to make predictions, to make, you know, to say to somebody, you're going to walk again. Because I've been seeing it. I see it for so long. You're going to walk again. I told one man, you're going to see again. He's still trying to catch up. Still in doubt. He's still in doubt. But God showed me, you're going to see again. Amen. Amen. Because he's been blind since nine, he can't see it. But I can see it. I can see that he's going to, he just needs some faith. But God said he's willing to, He's willing to make him see. But because of the man's faith has been dead since he now some maybe going on seventy now. And he's been blind since seven or nine. So because his he don't oh, wanna believe that anymore. But God said it. And so he's gonna carry it out. If the person can receive it. If he can't receive it, then how what he got to work with. Now God is saying to you, don't look back. He's saying to me, don't look back. Keep going in the face of the adversity. He says to keep hoping. He says to keep serving. He says to keep worshiping. Wow. Thank you, Lord God. I needed this message, you know. Yeah. I really did because it's very hard to keep going keep sometimes. Keep on keeping on. But God is saying here, I'm hey, I know it's hard. I know that the adversity. I know what you're going through. I want you to keep going. Why? Because you heard that the rumbling of the tsunami is coming, right? You see, I have a tsunami. I mean, I'm not blind. I can see the tsunami clear of blessings that God has in store for us. I know it, and I hear it coming. I hear it. But the enemy throws up these small streams. I've never seen so much problems come down on us before in my life. The year 2021, thank God it's December. <laughs> of 2021. Thank God. Because it was a rough year. I've never seen so much tragedy. I've never seen so many deaths. Every time I put on the, I, I, I don't put on the news much anymore because it's very depressing. But every time I go on the computer and they give you the news, I track how many deaths. Because that is like an indication that the devil is out there to kill, to destroy, and to steal our lives and our children's lives. There's so many deaths of children. That's really what really bothers me, the children. The children are getting done away with. That is concerning. That the enemy is rampant, running wild in the schools, turning the children out. There's a lot of homosexuality in the schools. They're telling the kids it's okay. They're telling the kids it's okay to marry a man if you're a boy. They're telling the kids it's okay if you're a girl to have another girl and to marry her one day. No, it's not right. God don't want that. The wrath of God is going to come upon us if we keep on telling, leading these kids to the slaughter. We cannot do this to the kids. We are on a mission to rescue as many children Speak to as many children. You have a part to play. It ain't just me. Everyone. We have a part to play. We got to open up our mouths now. It's the time for, you know, not saying anything and all of that is gone. Now we have to open our mouths and try to take the children out of danger. We, we have to be a hero. It's time now because the world is waiting on us to show up. And you know, we're we showing up without the superhero outfit. So, we're we showing up. 
But if you're waiting to get like some kind of cape or something, it ain't coming. You're going to have to go as you are. Because there is no cape really. You're going to have to use your own natural God-given powers to move mountains. You're going to have to be that, that, you know, that hero and save the day. As the enemy is going to just keep on running roughshod over us. Running over us. Why? Because we don't want to show up and save the day. Because we don't believe we are superhero. Some people don't believe that they are superhero. They think I'm talking nonsense. God gave you superpowers. He did. It's time for you to use them to save yourself and your family. You have to. This is the time that we're living in. You have to step up. Yes. Stop hiding in fear. Oh, I don't, I can't do much. What can I do? Yes, you can do much to save the day for your family. Actually, your family is dependent on you to save the day. If your name is dad, okay? Don't care how strong mom is. <laughs> They're looking on you, dad, to save the day. That's what dads do. So if you're a dad that's kind of, well, you know, the woman is in charge, you know, the females, you know, they're so strong well these days. They're the boss, you know. No, dad, it's not like that no more. Right now, mom needs some help. Moms need dad help them. So it's a wake-up call for a lot of people. For all the dads who have been acting like they're deadbeat dads, y'all can't be deadbeat no more. Because the enemy is sneaking the children, your kids, away. So you got to wake up now and like bring some power to the situation. Yeah. So it's a wake up call. Amen? Amen. Amen. And what is your job as a, as a hero? What is your job? See, we are heroes for Christ. So what is your job? Our job is to lead many to righteousness. This is our job. This is our assignment. You see, people don't understand one thing. I am on assignment. People don't understand why I'm here. Sometimes I don't understand why I'm here. But then I, when I realize that God chose me to, and put me on assignment, I'm like, okay, well, let me uh, <laughs> get myself I'm on assignment. Yes. When you're on a mission, when you're on an assignment, you have to get it done. All of us here today are on assignment. All of us. Not just me. I am only the messenger to remind you that you are on assignment and that you cannot play around with your assignment. You see, there's a lot of people who play around with their assignment. They wait, well, nobody is watching, God is in heaven, you know. So I maybe have time to get my assignment in. Listen, this is no more time. To get your assignment and this is it you have to live your assignment now you have to go to help the people to bring the souls in you have to mount up a, a, some type of defense you have to have some type of strategy okay I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that you know you have to have it I spend my days trying to figure out Lord how can I reach them how can how how, how can I reach them what can I say Maybe if I do this, maybe if I do that, maybe if I dress this way, maybe if I dress this way, how can I reach them? How can I reach the youth? What can I do, Lord? What more can I do? You see, this is what we need all to be asking God. See, people want uncommon favor. Okay? This is what we want. Uncommon favor. Without doing the work. You see, for uncommon favor, you got to do something uncommon. You got to put on your superhero suit and go out there. You know what I mean? You got to put it on and go out and look to do something uncommon like save some people. We have to save some people. So if we just hiding inside or hiding at our jobs, okay, doing every day, okay. All right, then you're not doing well with your assignment. What will your grade be then? You grade yourself. How is your assignment? And so sometimes we get hard on ourselves. I get particularly hard on myself, to be honest with you. And, you know, my husband always tries to tell me, he, not try, he always tell me, don't be so hard on yourself. Because I'm like, okay, I'm on assignment. You don't know, I'm on assignment. I got to hand this assignment.
time and end. I got to be accountable for my assignment. What have you done? Did you bring in the souls to the kingdom? This is my assignment. Did you bring in them souls? Did you touch some lives? You see, you all don't know. I write. I have five books. Why? Why five? I think there's even some more hidden in the computer. Why? I'm on assignment. That's why. I have to find a way. So what I do is I write. To bring out the word. Then what I started to do is I started feeding the people with the juice bar. If you went to the juice bar, you would most of the time you go there, you would hear on the TV in the juice bar <laughs> about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And many people would come in and they would say, Is this a juice bar or a church? Enjoy. I'm on assignment. Enjoy. <laughs> right? By any means necessary. Yeah. You gotta touch them lives. Yeah. You have to, you gotta find a way. You have to. This is your assignment. You gotta you gotta do it. Now if you don't do your assignment, well I'm not God. So that's between you and God if you never do your assignment. What well, he put you here on this earth to do if you never stood up and went for it because of fear, because of whatever, that's that's between you and God. Amen. So it's time to get busy serving God. <clears throat> the Lord absolutely needs servants. He equips us with all that we need to get the job done. He gives us power to get the job done. He doesn't send us in there empty-handed. He doesn't send us in there where we don't have to be just powerless like going in there. This is a big job that he's calling on us to do. This is a big job. So he doesn't send you in there with nothing. He sends you in there with the word. Hallelujah. With the word, you could scatter enemies and stamp on demons. With the word, you see, if you haven't tried it before, and this is like, you know, I'm talking to you like the memoirs of a superhero, okay? All right? In my world, what I have seen is that when enemies come up against me, you see, they call demons in the fort, they in people, but they're demons. I've seen them come up against me. To take me down. I've, I've seen some stuff. I've seen them tore me down. I've been dragged through the mud. Literally. You got to read one of the books to find out what about. But I was literally dragged through the mud. Literally. Okay. How do you, how do you get up from that? How do you get up from being dragged through the mud? And I used my power while I was being dragged through the mud. There were cops everywhere, police, six squad cars, and I'm, who do I call? Jesus. This was a long time ago, you know, and I, I tried calling, nobody answered, so I had to call Jesus. And I saw the enemy outside, and the enemy face changed. Hmm. The, it was a woman, but her face changed into a beast, literally. The face was that of a beast, and that was who was a after me, the beast, okay, to stop all of this. See all of this, all of this church stuff and all of that, all of this book writing to reach the world, all of that, all that making products to reach the world. The enemy wanted to stop that. So what they did is they sent people, but demons are in these people. And so when they came up against me, listen, only the word can save you then. So I said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And guess what happened? Take a guess. The demon start backing up. To flee. Yes. I never Not seen to flee. anything in my life like that before. Not to flee. No weapon. None, none, none. In the name of Jesus. None. Oh, when you hit them with that one, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They, it's like if they're being stabbed. This is a real fight. Was I scared? Oh, hello. Worse. I was scared. <laughs> but you know in whom you believe. But you have to fight. Yes. And then this is the, 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 the good part, right? Well, the bad part, or maybe the good, it was the good part, the turning point. The turning point in that battle that I was going through at that time was that everything ceased. The demon left. The woman left. 
And when she left, there was peace, but I was so on edge, like I couldn't even, like I was always on edge. You know, if I see a policeman, I'm really like on edge. You know what I mean? Like, I, everywhere I go, I would collect receipts. I was here because they lie on you. They make up a lot, a lot of lies, falsehoods, and they try to take you to court to take everything you have, to leave you with nothing. Yeah, it was a really, really hard time. But through it all, though, God said, go back in there. When they, they left, right? And they left. They took everything, and they left. Everything. There was one time the church was in Brooklyn. It was a very beautiful uh, castle. You know, it was, I wrote a book called The Last Castle in Brooklyn about this whole story. Martin calls it a saga. <laughs> okay? But when they left, they stole everything. And there was riches in that castle. I kid you not, the castle was full of riches. Okay, millions of dollars of riches. She came and she stole everything. There was like an old car in there that was like, um, it was a, a Chrysler, but it was a, it was an antique Chrysler. It was in good condition because of the garage. But she stole that too. She stole everything, everything. And I was left with nothing. And I was actually the rightful heir. I was left with nothing. And then they, they said, um, oh, don't come back here. And a judge signed that order through lies and forces the judge signed the order where I was not allowed to go to that church. And then God spoke and he said, get back in there and fight. Get back in there and fight for that. This is, this is for you. This is what I raised you up for. This is for you. But after I had been beat down and facing demons and all of that, and I had kids to watch, I had my kids, they were small then. But I'm saying, no, nobody want to go back in the ring after that. After you get beat up like that, right? Would you want to go back in the ring for another round? You're this kid. And my friends, everybody, my family, they said, no, just leave all that up. Go with all everything. The castle, the, all the, everything that was for you, that God said for you. You just leave that alone, girl. You suffer enough. You want to get trapped through the mud again? And they make sense, right? That's, that, that makes sense. I was supposed to give up then. The only problem was I couldn't. God. I couldn't. God said, get back in there. And so I got back in there and go through the motions of fighting. Penniless. Had no money to fight. Can't afford no attorney. Because I don't got no money. I barely had money was to pay the mortgage where I live. I started getting, I worked on, like, I went to a supermarket and tried to get some, tried to work there at the supermarket, trying to make some money so I could pay the mortgage at that time. This was, like, a long time ago, in 2005, 2006. You know, it was very hard. But then guess what happened? The glory of God came down. Amen. God sent attorneys. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry to say this, but they were great white attorneys <laughs> with big, big offices on Madison Avenue, huge offices, three floors, and their clients were Google. Who was your client? Google. Amen. I'm like, oh, we represent Google too, ma'am. Google, I mean. And how much you gonna charge? Because, no man, we were sent to do this pro bono. Of course, it's the glory of God. Yeah, only the glory the of God. The glory of God. Only his intervention. Man, I've seen some things that God did. Supernatural. There's no way I could stop. That's why I'm here now. Can't now, if I hadn't gone you. back in there, we wouldn't have won the lawsuit. No. And she, and you know what happened to her, right? The last I heard was that she was blind. That was the last that I heard, was that she went blind. She was so scary, really, really scary. And I'm sure that you have some obstacles and maybe even some people. Whenever there's a death, people do strange things when there's property and death. People come and they start dragging you through the mud. They start doing all sorts of stuff. 
But that's it. Touch not his anointed. Unless you want to get blind too. I'm saying all of this to say that you cannot give up. Sometimes you got to get back in there and fight again. Even though you just got your butt whooped. You have to get back in there. In true superpower. True superhero form. You ever see a superhero get it? Beep, beep, beep. And then, at the, you know, they get up. You got to get up the same way and fight. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord God. That's, that's what the, the Lord wants, wants you to know. He wants to encourage you that, the, you know, it's not over. That he still have more for you. And that if you, you have to keep on serving him to unlock all these blessings. If you give up, you don't get them. So if I had given up, we wouldn't be here right now. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, in addition to, um, you know, the, the lawyers had funny names, by the way, okay? Their name was Peter, Paul. Wow. <laughs> they were. That's supernatural blessings. The same supernatural blessings that God has in store for you. For us, right? Yes. If you would serve him again. If you won't be so beat down by this theater. If you will not so beat down by this world. By misery lane after misery lane. Maybe 30 years of misery lane you've been through. Maybe, oh God, you hurting inside because the misery lane is so, so, so miserable to go through. The hurt, the grief. Can you imagine that pastor who lost those two sons? It's not good to bury your children. You can't. You don't know how. But he had to get back in the ring. Yes. Some, some even last half of two half a dozen family members. It's crazy. What are you going to do? Are you, are you getting back in the ring or are you still have to continue. Have to looking for cover have somewhere? Are you still looking for cover somewhere? There ain't no cover. You have to get back in there because your family needs you. Your kids, your wife, your, your children, your husband, your family needs you. So you have to fight for them. Like you ain't never fight before. Amen. 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 And guess what? You ain't fighting alone. The glory of the Lord is with you. Amen. The Holy Spirit is with you. Hallelujah. That's a time to say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. God saying, I will go before you and level the mountains. What mountain? He went before and he leveled them down so that you can pass. Hallelujah. He said all the bad breaks. He said all the bad health. All the mountain of bills. He's going to level it down for you. And then he said one nice thing. One thing here that I love what he says. God says in Isaiah 44, I will give you the treasures of darkness. <laughs> now these are real treasures. Okay, we're talking about pianos, we're talking about real estate, we're talking about cash, large amounts of it, all the treasures of darkness. This is what we're talking about. He said, I will give that to you, my servant. You just get back in there and serve me. You just bring them souls in by any means necessary. You sing, you dance, go up there and sing and dance then. And tell them about me. Why are you singing and dancing? Jesus, Jesus. Whatever you can do, you can write what? Write more, faster, get the books out. You can play music, okay, play everywhere in the subway, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Urgency right now. Because of the world that we in. There's urgency. It's time to do this. And God said that I will strengthen you to do this. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. 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 And he says, finally, I will be the beacon to the Gentiles. I will lift up my banner, Jehovah Nisi, to the peoples. They will bring their sons and their daughters to me and carry their daughters on their shoulders. Kings will be your foster fathers. And queens will be your nursing mothers. I will command them to bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. Hallelujah. 
Then you will know that I am the Lord and those who hope in me will never be disappointed. Shalom. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I needed that word. Those who hope in me will never be disappointed. Amen. Let us praise God today. Amen. 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 Amen.